That big fire was another big flash over, so we're at 900 degrees Celsius in the inside now. So if you weren't dead before and you weren't dead before that, now you really are. <laughs> I'm Dr. William Short of Hurstwick. Hurstwick is an organization based in the United States that researches Vikings, all things Vikings, but with a focus on Viking combat. And we're here at Erikstade in Huykedalen to do research on the Viking Age battle tactic of attacking a man by burning him in his longhouse. And so we want, it's mentioned many times in the sagas, other literary sources, and in the law codes, and we'd like to see how it works. What really happens when you try to set a Viking Age turf house on fire? Now in many Viking lands it was easy to set the house on fire because it was made of wood, but here in Iceland, houses were made of turf over a wooden frame. So the only place to set the fire would be uh, at the door. The door was the only external use of wood. Turf does burn, but it's very hard to ignite. So the fire was set at the door, and that's what we're exploring with these experiments here. We're exploring how long it takes and what happens when you set the fire outside the door. The fire should spread through the door and into the internal wood framework and the passageway through the turf over the door and then into the framework of the house. And at that point, the house is doomed. It's eventually going to collapse. It's going to fill with smoke. It's going to get too hot to survive. And there'll be poisonous gases inside the house. Now, the experiment we're doing in the shipping container here is really focusing on how the fire starts at the door. So we're using some modern materials here so that we can reuse this container again and again and again. It won't, it won't burn. But each time we're putting up a new door and a new framework over the door through the passageway. And we're doing the same structure six or seven times during the series of experiments, changing just one parameter to see how that change affects how the fire spreads through the house. And in the study, we'll be able to measure temperatures inside the house to see how long someone might survive. We'll be able to measure gases inside the house, oxygen, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and hydrocarbons. We'll be able to measure the heat energy coming off the fire. And we'll be able to have uh, cameras inside so we can see what's going on inside. So that is what's happening in this container. And maybe we might step inside the container and see some of the measurement devices. We are have with us students from the Fire Protection Engineering Department of Worcester Polytechnic Institute, a university uh, near Hurstwick in the Boston area. Here you can see the passageway behind the door. Normally this would be surrounded by turf in a real turf house, and we're using this gypsum board which won't burn. Like turf, it won't get uh, involved in the fire right away. But the framework over the door is typical of Viking Age houses here in Iceland, made of wood, and over the wood are a lot of small sticks uh, that lift the turf off of the wood so that the wood doesn't rot. And you can see that it's heavily instrumented, many, many, many temperature sensors uh, behind the door, measuring the temperature of the door so we can see how it spreads. Over here in the central part of the container, we have a series of gas sensors that are collecting gas and sending it out to instruments outside, and as well as temperatures, uh, so we can see what's going on in here. Would somebody be able to breathe here? Is there enough oxygen for them to breathe? Is there too much carbon monoxide for them to stay conscious? In addition, we have cameras in multiple locations so we can see the fire. So that is what we're doing with these container burns. Now I'd like to walk over to the house that we have constructed, and we'll be doing one burn there of something that is close to a full-size house. The house is based on the house at Erikstade, which is just across the river from us. And that reprodu reproduction house is based on ruins, which are a short distance away, just up the hill. So archaeologists checked the ruins and came up with these plans, and we're following those dimensions in our house here. Now, we don't have the, the resources to build a full-size house, so what we're doing is building just the first room of the house, the andiri. And so what we're interested in here is, how does the fire spread from the pile of sticks outside, through the door, through the passageway, uh, through the turf, and then into the framework of the house. Because once the framework of the house is on fire, the house is doomed. It's going to collapse um, because the framework gets weakened by the fire. So let's go up closer and see what we've got here. 
We've got a wooden door. We've got the passageway. It's covered with turf. It's a pretty accurate uh, representation of the Viking Age turf house at Erichstade. So we'll set fire to that and be able to study how the fire moves. And we'll have the same kind of instrumentation that we had in the container burns over here. So we'll be measuring temperatures all throughout the house. We'll be able to measure gas concentrations. And we'll be able to measure heat flux. And we'll have multiple cameras inside so that we can see how the fire moves. So that is our plan. We've done a number of tests even before we came to Iceland, burning these doors, trying to see how the fire moves. And we've already done several container tests. And what we are finding here is that the fire moves through the house much faster than what the sagas seem to indicate. So we are very interested in seeing what we find when we do the full-size house later today. Hello everyone, my name is uh, John Zimek. I'm a PhD student at Worcester Polytech. Uh, I'm the project manager for our Hirschwick project, which is our uh, Icelandic trip. I'm joined with a portion of my team, uh, and we were tasked with looking at what happens in the Viking Age combat tactic of burning turf houses. And this was done essentially so that you could uh, mitigate losses of your combat power, as well as it was very effective of uh, defeating your enemy in their home turf. Uh, the project scope was really looking at the bonfire ignition, how that lit the door, how that fire spread through their roof system, and then what were the tenability conditions uh, inside a simulated environment. I focused on the um, different gas species that we were measuring. We're measuring them at a, ver a few varying heights, going from half a meter all the way up to two meters. And the, those all, f all five of our measurement locations have O2, and then at the one that's at 1.7 meters from the ground around head height is, all, is the one that's measuring CO, CO2, and the total hydrocarbons in addition to the oxygen. So then we can use that to get an idea of how long it takes until the um, the, the room is un unten un untenable uh, on the basis of like the gas concentrations inside the mixture. Me and my colleague Abhi is working on the thermocouples, so we are looking into flame spread on the door as well as on the roof. On the roof. Um, so previously when we did the experiments, we didn't really much uh, notice much flame spread on the door, but these experiments were quite useful. The previous experiments, we did see some flame spread on the door, which was quite interesting. And uh, we have on the roof too. That's going to help us to study how the flame is going to propagate along the roof as well as on the door. Uh, we have nine thermocouples on the door uh, and on the roof we have around 12 thermocouples. One side of the roof we have instrumented with the thermocouples. Other, other side of the roof we can actually study using the cameras. So that will be interesting to see. Hi, I'm Christian. And my main focus for this project was investigate or using cameras to investigate how the fire propagates through the door and through the eaves. Uh, we found in the lab scale experiments that we did back in WPI that the fire spread actually didn't necessarily happen through the door, but rather through the ceiling. And uh, our main way to, to discover this was actually uh, a set of sacrificial cameras that were uh, designed to burn up in the experiment. I essentially use uh, cheap webcams that uh, I fortified a little bit to be more resistant to fire and a custom program that can save it even if the camera burns up the video file isn't corrupted. So we actually have interior footage from inside the container for each of the burns uh, which is something that we've never done before in the lab and so we're super excited to be able to bring that out here as well. Hello, I'm Fernando. Um, mostly been doing the documentation from before and after the fires and working alongside uh, John for the administrative part of the project. This has been a very unique experience, not only in terms of the, uh, well, the experiment that we were performing. We didn't find anything nearly similar to burning a Viking turf house. Uh, and also it's been uh, very valuable for us as students since it's been completely developed, administ administered and like work along uh, between the students. So on site we don't have any postdoc or, or professor which have also provided us the opportunity to see and solve all of the issues by ourselves. Um, at some point I will say that we overdid the administration and organization at the point that the TSA didn't even question what we were bringing here. Uh, we were really worried because the amount and type of equipment was highly uh, or very prob probably going to set an alarm 
at least in the terms of metal or components, but everything worked out well. We hadn't been working really smoothly, I will say. Um, the last two days have been mostly plug and play, so uh, we're really happy about it. We're all from Worcester Polytechnical Institute, or WPI, so we're one of the only handful of universities that have a degree program in fire protection engineering. I think there's three in the United States, don't quote me, uh, and about ten throughout the world. Uh, this is a really interesting program because it really focuses on the fundamentals of heat and mass transfer and something that we like to call uh, fire dynamics. And we f uh, focus our studies on fire dynamics, and then once we have a good understanding of those baseline skills, we start applying it to different things. And so this project is a very good application, or a very good example of how we can apply the basics of fire dynamics to a very relevant issue, a uh, very niche issue, but it's also like very relevant in the field of uh, historical fire protection. There's not a lot of research work that's done on this, mainly because you don't really get the opportunity to go burn historical or replica historical structures structures all that often. Um, so we're very excited, we're very uh, happy, we're very uh, honored to be invited out here and we'll uh, continue to do the great work and try to understand uh, what's actually happening for these turf houses when exposed to a Viking uh, ignition. I think if a Viking uh, blacksmith were to come on this setup here, they might not recognize the tools, but they would recognize the mess. Uh, this is uh, a chain link, essentially. I'm going to make a novel use of a hammer. I'm going to strike it with another hammer. I'm going to use this hammer as a flatter. So they took Falcon's heart and roasted it on a spit. And when he thought it would be fully cooked and the blood all boiled out of the heart, he tested whether the heart was ready to eat by touching it with his finger. His finger was burned and he put it in his mouth. But when the blood from Falcon's heart touched his tongue, what do you think is the effect of drinking dragon blood? You can hear what the birds are saying. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Any scientist will tell you, you taste dragon blood, <laughs> and you can understand bird language. He heard some wagtails talking in the branches above him. One of the wagtails said, and by the way, also, isn't this just like what we believe about people speaking a language that we don't understand in a bus? They're talking about me. As soon as he can understand birds, the birds are talking about him, of course. <laughs> not, not about bird business. <laughs> Which, we're saying plenty of business, right? I mean, a bird's life is a busy life. Just watch these cree or after you know, got all kinds of things to worry about. There sits Sigurdur, splattered with blood, cooking Falconer's heart on the open flame. I would say this prince was a wise man if he were the one who ate the dragon's heart. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> it's nice to have you here with us. This is a uh, research project done by Hirschwick trying to understand the Viking Age battle tactic of burning down a house. This is our final test of the fire festival this weekend. And what we'll be burning down is this replica of most of a Viking Age turf house. We're going to start the fire with something quite special. In the Viking Age, fires were started with a fire steel and something like flint or jasper or something to create a spark. And the fire steel we plan to use today was one that we made here five years ago as part of our iron festival, the research in how to make Viking Age iron. Jim Austin, uh, a blacksmith from the U.S., is going to, he, he created this fire steel from the iron we made, and he's going to use it to start the fire.
Typically, this would be the end of our data acquisition. However, given that it's the full scale and we want to see what actually happens when these things burn to a sizable amount, uh, we're going to keep it going. A lot of what we've seen so far is the fires propagated behind that door and into that little passageway. Uh, we're not really seeing a lot of flames on the inside ceiling just yet, so we're going to go um, incentivize it to have a bigger fire inside. That's the best way of phrasing it. They're going to be modern day Vikings. Burning combustibles. Usually you see this in compartment fires when the uh, temperature inside the compartment reaches 600 degrees. So by adding that ventilation and a little bit of fuel, we hit that prime marker. Now everything's burning on the inside. So all the students in the back are freaking out. You can probably hear them a little bit. You don't get to see this that often. It's hard to study. It's hard to obtain. So. You're about to see fire through the chimney now. Through 60 in a chimney. Three hundred in a chimney. So we just got a we just hit a thousand degrees inside. I was seeing three hundred from the chimney. One thousand on our on our Wow. Hey, so for those following along, what we did is that big fire was another big flashover. So we're at 900 degrees Celsius in the inside now. So if you weren't dead before and you weren't dead before that, now you really are. Sorry, we got the crazy cowboy thing. What's got a vera? Got a Sort of a hater, a bastard. Don't worry, we'll fix it in post. 